Fucking A. So a lot of folks uh, also, they, they've been bringing up uh, city maps, uh, specifically, you know, d the, the Danforth map in State of Decay Lifeline, uh, which is, you know, expansion to the original State of Decay, um, and which might be relevant to uh, our quiz question later on. So be thinking about your Lifeline trivia. Uh, but anyway, Danforth, it was a city, but you were never allowed to go deep inside the city. We made that a big danger zone. Zombies would spawn like crazy if you tried to get anywhere near it. And, uh, and you weren't allowed to go and explore any of the tall buildings. And we got some you know, comments in the chat saying, you know, what, what I'd love to have is a fully explorable city, uh, you know, like Danforth, but you can actually go inside all the buildings. And that's, that is lovely to imagine. Uh, that does sound kind of neat. One of the problems though is that, I mean, have you ever like actually explored every room in a skyscraper? <laughs> There's a lot of them. Yeah, we would end up having, <laughs> just on the boring technical side, you would, uh, to make that happen, um, it would require a level load every time you went into a large building. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, seriously. I mean, so the, one of the things that we like take a lot of pride in in our game is that we've sort of established a rule that if you see a building of any significant size, uh, that you can go inside of it. And occasionally we've had to viola violate that rule slightly. We had to burn down a school that was too big <laughs> for you to be able to go inside in the original State of Decay. Uh, we had to, you know, pile up pile up debris on the staircases leading up to the upper stories of a hospital. We, we didn't burn that Drucker. school down. We left it on fire forever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, fires, the fires never went out. Five years later, the fires still burn. Yeah, and, and then, but then we got the hospital in Drucker County that similarly you can't go in the upper stories, you can only go into the lower stories. And, and that's for a reason. I mean, we basically, we, we couldn't load the rest of the map if we had to keep the interior of that building available. Because yeah, yeah. so. we have to, every time you get within range of those buildings, they have to load, they start loading all the things that are in there. And imagine 50 rooms in an office building that essentially have, you know, that are a little bit different, but have tons of stuff in them. It would just be a nightmare. You'll notice it in games like, like you know, Grand Theft Auto or even like Red Dead Redemption. A lot of the buildings just have locked doors and you cannot go inside. And that's yep. for a reason, you know, because it would just, like, th those games are very slick because they're very careful about how much they actually create and how much they just suggest in the background. And so because we're trying so hard to make our game um, you know, have that, that level of realism where if you look in a building, you can go inside that building. Uh, we sort of made that rule for ourselves, but that meant we had to very carefully choose our locations. Uh, so we were choosing reasonable locations where you actually could fulfill that fantasy. Yeah. So that means rural areas, you know, outlying suburbs and, and, and places like that where you actually can, you know, live that way. Uh, and, in the game. and the rural areas fit well into the, um, the faded Americana. Yeah. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, the aesthetics that are that are, are you know that our art director Doug uh, you know really kind of zeroed in on. We've got just a lot of complementary things, right? We've got this faded Americana feel, that sort of like nostalgic vibe that goes right along with these rural settings, which co coincidentally are the kinds of settings that we can create yeah. uh, with with the rule set that we want you to, to play with. So I'd like, to, I'd like to compliment Andy on luring all those zombies into the bad guys, including yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that feral, feral including, owl. including Johnny Farrell over there. Yeah. Uh, So Monkey Bomb um, asks if there's a chance for a city map, um, and I mean we we love the idea. We did one in Lifeline. Um, the 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 difficulty comes in. I mean we're already kind of pushing our um, our memory loading uh, to the limit with this kind of density, mm -hmm. and until we figure out a system that's more efficient. Um, Trying to load in all the stuff that would be in a in a block full of multi-story buildings uh, kind of makes me want to throw up right now. Just because, <laughs> uh, not because I don't like the idea, because um, it's really hard for us with this system right now to think about streaming that much content. Uh, 
we'd probably have a lot more of those little loading screens, you know, where you where you're driving along and and it uh, it goes black for a second. Um, if we were to do that today, but I love that idea and um, we had so much fun with Lifeline, anyways, uh, that it would be fun to try and do something like that again. But yeah, I, yeah, I love one thing I love about our game is the fact that you know. In most open world games, there's just lots of buildings that are fake, you know, that are just big empty shells. In our game, we have very few buildings that are empty shells. I mean, the, the hospital's upper stories are empty, but the downstairs you can go through. Um, the, uh, you know, there's the, the little coffee shacks, you know, uh, you can't go inside those, but they're pretty small. Why would you want to? Uh, but most of the buildings in our game are actually real, legit buildings. You can go inside, they're fully stocked with everything. And that makes them way more expensive than the buildings that just whiz by uh, and have nothing inside them in other games. Thanks for watching. If you have ideas for future videos, leave them in the comments below.